Knoxville, Iowa, the dirt is jet black. Good for growing corn. Even better for racing an 800 horsepower World of Outlaw Sprint Car. For sprint car drivers and fans, Knoxville is the Midwest mecca of mud. 175 racers have signed up to see if they can lay claim to sprint car racing's most coveted crown and the $100,000 check that goes with it. Grab the glory or one mistake can cost you dearly. Call it what you will, the Daytona of dirt or the Super Bowl for sprint cars. When it comes to dirt tracks, everyone knows Knoxville. Hi everyone, I'm Dave Reef. We're proud here at Diamond Peace Sports to be bringing you all the action of the 37th annual Amico Knoxville Nationals right into your living room. 1997 will go down as one of the closest points chases in World of Outlaw history, and nowhere was that more apparent than at this year's Nationals. Without a doubt, Steve Kinzer was one of the favorites. After all, no one knows success more than the 11-time Nationals winner and 14-time King of the Outlaws. And then there's Mark Kinzer, fresh off his first World of Outlaw title and the defending Nationals champ. With Father Carl as crew chief, they've dominated Knoxville over the last two years. Sammy Swindell was having one of his finest seasons to date, but he hasn't won the Nationals in Knoxville since 1983. This is Sammy's best chance since. And finally, Dave Blaney. His first year as owner-operator has been very successful. Just ask the historical Big One champion as he goes after another $100,000 payday. Just what are the Knoxville Nationals? Four nights of racing, 170 plus cars, and more than a half a million dollars in prize money. And it all culminates with Saturday night's big dance. Now you may be asking, how do you get there? Well, it's all about points. Every driver gets one chance to qualify, and everything that happens from time trials to their qualifying night and main event has a point value assigned to it. To be up front on money night, you must time well during time trials, then come from the tail of your heat, and then have a good finish in that night's feature. Total up the points from two nights of qualifying. If you're lucky and good, you'll grab your share of the money. Diamond P's cameras use night number one of qualifying to set up but the races roared on anyway, with Mark Kinzer grabbing the top spot of the points on the strength of his feature win. Sammy Swindell is right near the top as well, as is Dave Blaney. Young Tyler Walker claimed the fifth spot. Andy Hillenberg and Stevie Smith round out the top ten in points following night number one of qualifying. Moving now to Thursday night, where it was lights, camera, and action on night number two of qualifying. Ralph Shaheen, Brad Doty, Bobby Gerald, and I brought it to you live. The A main went something like this. Steve Kinzer, alongside of Paul McMahon, the youngster in the Mopar from California. Row two, Joe Gurdy. He had troubles in his heat race. He'll be in row two. Lasowski and Honda, they got to fight all the way from row four. That'll be tough for them. Wolfgang Anderson, Jim Swindell with the Ford. Can he make it from row six? Jim St. Arnold, I called him Johnny Herrera moments ago. They got the same car. He'll be out there in the 47T. Dion Hindi, 11D. Tim, Tim Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. And the Carl and Gobrek. Steve Kinzer, Paul McMahon, Danny Lasowski, Jack Honshield racing for Saturday night's A Main. Trying to find 
the groove as he heads into turn three. Right up there with the right rear, up in the moisture. Fast way around to save to help save the tire. There's Hot Shield, Pennzoil car, and, and Kinzer in the Quaker State. Delansky had a superb run here last year on a qualifying night. Kinzer trying to run the middle, got that right rear end of the ground that I spoke of earlier. Hot Shield from extreme top, trying to make it work. There he is going in, underneath the Paul McMahon in the Mopar car. The man comes right back around. That's out of turn two, right in front of the Hall of Fame. Again, Kinzer with that right rear. And he moves up and takes the line away from Paul McMahon. Hot Shield moves, moves in, he's going to the bottom. Turn one, he's gonna slide up and take the line away, Paul. Look at that, back around. right up in front of McMahon. And the youngster not intimidated at all by these two veterans. Steve and him almost bang wheels getting into turn three. Look at Hodge, you've got to run off the of turn four. Look at that. Yellow, we've got a yellow flag, Ralph. Yellow flag comes out. Back on the back there with a seven yep. car. It's on the back straightaway coming out of turn two. Penninger. Hot's hot this time on the bottom. Hot goes upstairs. Doesn't work as good. Yeah, he wasn't going to uh, let him get away with it as easily as he did the first time. Delansky breaking oh, away Hodge again. Oh! Great save, Jack. Boy, that cost him. There goes Hodnett. Hodnett, uh, Swindell, yeah, Swindell coming along as well. They go three wide for that position, which should be for fourth. Fifth as Gertie is in the fourth. Give the position to Hod right now. But he's got a big run coming off of turn two. Fantastic run as he closes in on those guys. Up in front of him is Delansky. There you see him leading this one. It's halfway, they see the flags crossed. It's halfway, got 10 laps to go. Here's the best fight on the racetrack. That's Gurney on the bottom. McMahon on top. Then it's Hod and Shield. In the 47 T. Coming in behind is the lap car. Hot's going to try to Arnold. Him. He did split him. He went under McMahon. He was going to try to go to the top and get around Gertie. What an incredible going, going into turn one. He'll take the high line around Gertie to see if he can make it stick. If he gets a drive off of two, he's got him right here. And he does. Things are coming together as, as the race goes on. He gets faster as he really, really got up over the cushion there, about to take the wall. Well, look at Gertie on the bottom. Gertie doesn't. He wasn't going to give up easy, is he? You see Kinzer just in front of them, the second place car, as this is the fight for third. Hot has it. What you see there a lot of times, like Gertie around the bottom trying to make it work, you know, it's just a momentum, you get your speed up. The more you run, the faster you go. And uh, Gertie's kind of stuck down there on the bottom. His car is not working on the top, so Brad's starting to pull away. I think the King is reeling in Delansky, and Hot is coming right with him. He is. We're gonna have a fight for the lead before this one is over. Seven laps to go. I don't know if there's enough time, but Delansky doesn't make any major mistakes. That's the fight for the top three positions. Gurney is in fourth, Jeff Swindell is fifth, Lasoski now up to sixth. If we look back behind that, give Lasoski fifth now. There's Hot Shield going under Kinzer. This is the best thing that could happen for Delansky as these two guys get to racing each other. Boy, is that Pennzoil car quick here tonight. Forbrook has got this thing working late in the race, obviously. And this, the racetrack, as the race goes on, it's gonna be more like it's gonna be on Saturday night's A main. It's gonna be drier, up around the top like this, so they've gotta be happy. We have uh, about four laps left. Boy, Hod. Clock's ticking. <laughs> it's ticking, he's closing in on him. I don't know if he has enough time. He won the Ethan Hawk Classic here, 4th of July, did Jack Hod and Shield. There's Craig Delansky looking to Boy. take the wall. Look at this, he's on it. Forget about the clock. Clock's out the window. Hot's got him. He's on it. You see how good he's working. If he can find something to, to uh, catch him, one thing, he's going to have to put a slide. If he can stay with him down the back straightaway, he'll put a slide job on him, right? Uh, here, right here. How about right here? Yeah. There it is. That's and remember, said. Jack Hottenshield had the problems in the heat races. Brad, he battled back from getting knocked out of the heat to the lead of the A feature. And what an incredible night. And remember, he about spun earlier. Lost some positions, gathered it back up, and, and made up a lot of ground. 
Odds your leader, Delansky is second, Steve Kinzer is third, Gertie's fourth, Lasowski fifth, Jeff Swindell is sixth, Hodnett runs in seventh right now. As we watch Jack Hodenshield, who had such great focus, Boy. and he almost ran into Hannigan right this, there. This lap traffic, he's having a hard time getting around. He's a runner, uh, Hannigan right there, clear sailing. All what you have to do is focus. Jack Hodenshield has had around. all night, and to the checkered flag. Greg Delansky second, Kinzer third. Behind them comes Danny Lasowski beat Joe Gertie to the line for fourth. Boy, he came out of nowhere the last few laps, found something. So much on action on the racetrack with the battle up front. Hard to see the great run Lasowski made to fourth. After two nights of qualifying, Mark held on to first, followed by Lasowski and Swindell. Hodenschild's big win propelled him into fourth with Greg Hodden in fifth. Craig Delansky led the next five, followed by Herrera, Steve Kinzer, Joe Gertie, and Dave Blaney. But the first five rows were not yet set in concrete because of a little thing called the A scramble. The top ten you just saw get totally inverted and race for 12 more laps on Friday night. Again, points on the line. Points for your finish and a point for every car you pass. The only good news for these drivers is they're already locked into the richest race in sprint car history. Steve Evans joined our Friday night TNN Motor Madness telecast as the A scramble hit the track. Now let's take a look at this lineup. Dave Blaney and Joe Gertie up in row one. The King alongside of Hollywood in row two. Craig Delansky surprising many, not himself in the 1W. He's alongside the car that you're looking from the onboard camera, Greg Hodnett. The Wild Child, what a run he had last night at the A-Main. And Sammy Swindell, thrilling moves in his races on Wednesday. The dude, the number two point man, Mark Kinzer, the reigning World of Outlaw champion, he will start dead last. Now, Mark Kinzer has to finish third to hold on to the pole. You go on board with a come out on board camera with Greg Hodnett. You can see Steve Kinzer just off to his left. You are on the outside of row number three of the A scramble. And no dials here on his dash. Hard, harder dash yeah. to read. You well, can you see, can the see Yeah, you can see the oil pressure gauge or the water temperature right there, right over his left hand. And again, you see the lines coming down the side of the roll cage there. Those rubber hoses go down to the valve for the wing. Steve Evans, what do you think? I think it's going to be a real shootout. And let me tell you something. This race ends the month of money, as we like to call it. And tomorrow's purse not only pays $100,000 to win, but huge amounts of money all down through the field. So how they finish here is critical for the old bank account. Sammy, Sw Sammy Swindell and Mark Kinzer getting together in one and two. Held them up dramatically. Dave Blaney is your leader. Steve Kinzer is second. Gertie is third. Johnny Herrera fourth. Danny Lasowski all the way up to fifth now. Delansky on the outside of him. Then it's Hodnett, Hodnshaw. And here comes Mark Kinzer and Sammy behind him. Here's the replay. Watch the back of this fight, Brad. Just went into turn one and Sammy got real loose. Right there, about spins out right in front of Mark Kinzer. Mark did a great job. They, they did make a little contact, but nothing serious. Big fire for Steve, Steve Kinzer. Kinzer down the back straightaway. Has blown his engine. The engine is cooked on the Quaker State number 11. That brings out a red flag, an amazing turn of events. And Sammy Swindell has pulled off down pit road. So problems with his machine, and Steve climbs out of the Quaker State car. Well, the red flag is out, so Sammy can pull yep. in. And he dove down immediately, but I think he might not have been happy after the incident out right. there. Which His is... car wasn't nearly as tight as he had hoped it would be when he about spun going into turn one. There's the channel lock gambler. And Steve Kinzer, as we said, has climbed out of the Quaker State car. I'm guessing that Steve blew the engine. It could have been an oil line or something breaking, but usually a flame out like that is the bottom end of the engine exploding. Well, that puts him to the back of this deal. Yeah. What's that going to do to him tomorrow? Well, we're going to get a look at it right here. This is out, out of turn two, down the back straightaway. It looks like it blew the whole bottom. Does he know right there from the smoke oh, you see? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you can feel it. I mean, if it's the blown engine, pieces are flying out. It vibrates and shakes just a second before it, it lets loose. Wow. Look at that. That's, Fantastic camera work by our guys out there. That's all the oil from the crankcase. 
See him, see him reaching down there? He's, he's turning the fuel off and things underneath the steering wheel. You see his left hand down yep. between his legs. Now that's some snifty driving. It's one thing to go fast, but when you're on fire to bring it to a stop smoothly and safely, that's some pretty stout driving. Steve Kinzer has won eight of the 11, the last 11 Knoxville Nationals. And it's gonna be tough for him to get the ninth one. How about Mike Koger on that camera work out there? Our TNN cameraman out there. Mike, way to go. Excellent coverage. Now, so much was happening in the early stages of this. Watch this again. Here's Sammy right and Mark. Well, actually, I, I'm looking at it again, Hodenshield got sideways. I think Sammy flinched, corrected to keep from running into Hod, and you saw Mark Kinzer get in the back of him. At that angle, we didn't see that before, but it looked like Hodenshield actually got sideways in front of Sammy. Bobby Gerald has already caught Steve Kinzer. Bobby? Well, Steve, I know this is disappointing, and so far it just hasn't been uh, your nationals here. Nothing you can do about that one, though. No, I just broke a rod. Uh, this uh, happens once in a while, you know. It, you know we've uh, been pretty fortunate as far as uh, breaking any motor parts, but uh, that stuff happens once in a while, and nothing you can do about it. We'll put another one in, be back tomorrow night. Uh, it hadn't been our week, but the car actually felt pretty good. Uh, We've made some changes on it, but uh, it better be awful good if we're going to start back as far as we're going to be starting. So we'll see what happens. Well, you didn't get to help yourself tonight, but I guess the good news is you didn't really hurt yourself. You're still going to be starting somewhere, what, around the fifth row? Yeah, fourth or fifth row. I don't know how bad, how, I, you know, I really don't know where the points at. Back a long ways uh, to be spotting the, the cards that's on the front. All right. Tough luck for Steve Kinzer. Like he said, he'll be back tomorrow night, Ralph. To the orange cone, Blaney out in front of Gertie. Herrera, Lasowski, Delansky, Hodden it to the bottom. Nice. Hot shield coming with him. Look at Greg Hodden it coming in Selma Shell car. You're on board with him. You're fourth at the A scramble in Knoxville. between those two cars. Blaney checking out in the vibrant car. Here is Mark Kinzer on the inside, the white and orange 5M. Jack Hodgeshield up in the cushion in the Pennzoil yellow car, and Sammy in front of him. Changes to Swindell's car. It looks like they've helped him a little bit. Delansky's gone all the way to the back in the 1W. Look at this fight, though. Shield out in front of Mark Kinzer. This is basically a hot lap session that's paying some money. These guys are really, really going to school tonight because the racetrack, the way it is now, is going to be a lot like tomorrow night's race. Han Shield is seventh right now. He's closing in on Daniel Lasowski, who just got passed by Sammy Swindell. That puts Swindell in fifth, Lasowski in sixth, Han Shield seventh. Mark Kinzer eighth, Delansky ninth. Steve Kinzer would be the tenth car. He's already out. Dave Blaney going down the back straightaway already. It's about a half a straightaway ahead of Johnny Herrera. As you watch this fight between Mark Kinzer and Jack Hodgeshield that continues to thrill this crowd. See Mark's car really bouncing as he goes through the run, Fred. Yeah, what you try to do is you soften the race, but when the track gets slick like this, you soften the suspension. The mile per hour the speed slow down a little bit, and uh, so you soften the car up, try to get a hold of the racetrack, and sometimes through the ruts and the bumps, the car will bounce a little more. But that helps keep the tires on the, that's why you go to the softer uh, suspension, to help keep the tires planted on the racetrack. There's Danny Lasowski fighting with Mark Kinzer. Lasowski now driving Chris Black's car. He's been here three times with that car since he got behind the wheel in the last three weeks. He's won here two out of three times. Should have had the third one. Was leading when he fell out. He was the second leading point man. Mark Kinzer was the number one point man coming into this eight scramble. Meanwhile, Blaney's just 
Out front, there he is by a ball oh, straight away. White flag is out to Dave Blaney. He'll be sporting the Amico colors next year, wins the A scramble for Vibrant here tonight. Blaney, your winner. Herrera gets second. Third goes to Joe Gurdy, fourth to Hodnett, fifth to Sammy Swindell, sixth to Lasoski, seventh to Mark Ginzer, eighth to Hodenshield, ninth, ninth to, Delansky. to Delansky, tenth to Steve Kinzer. Mark Kinzer still had enough points to start from the pole as Greg Hodnett bettered his starting position by one. He'll start fourth. The biggest mover from the back half came courtesy of Dave Blaney's A scramble win. He moved up three spots to seventh as Steve's fire dropped him to tenth. Well, now the stage is set. The only thing left to do, settle the score and hand out some money. However, rain on Saturday night forced the finals to be moved to Sunday. No problem. Just as you might have seen it live on TNN, here is the greatest show on dirt. Enjoy. In the last month, these three men have claimed $180,000 in the first three events in the Pennzoil World of Outlaws Month of Money. Tonight, they would trade it all to wear the crown of Knoxville National Champion. Steve Kinzer has won the Nationals 11 times, six more than any other driver. Steve will have to start mid-pack after blowing an engine last night. Dave Blaney won 100 grand last week. Tonight, he can make it 200,000 in seven days. More importantly, he wants his first Nationals title. He'll start seven. Mark Kinzer is the defending Knoxville champ. He'll start on the pole in the car wrenched by the sports kingmaker, his dad, Carl. He is the man to beat as the Nationals are live on TNN. From Iowa, it's the 37th running of the Amico Knoxville Nationals. For four nights, the thunder rolled on this big half mile. Then last evening, moments before we were to go on the air live, the thunder came from above. Thunder, lightning, even tornado sightings. Needless to say, we were out of here. But because we're TNN, we're back. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Evans. Last night, this place was jammed with 35,000 screaming race fans. Some of those could not return. So for those of you watching us tonight with that $30 reserve seat stub in your pocket, we're going to do our level best to put you back in that seat where you belong. But for all of you who have returned, welcome to day five of the Knoxville Nationals. And we have got it all the richest purse in the history of dirt track racing. Over a half a million dollars. A black gumbo racetrack that may be the quickest in Knoxville history and the cars and stars of the Pennzoil world of outlaws. Only one question remains. Are you ready? Are you ready for the greatest show on dirt? I think they're ready. Boy, I tell you, Brad, it might be 24 hours later, but I still got goosebumps oh, the boy. size of the right rear tire on Sammy Swindell's sprint car. Man, <laughs> this is electrifying here at Knoxville. It, it is the Knoxville Nationals. It is a big one, but Brad, we've had a 24-hour rain delay. I know it's messed us up a little bit. What has it done to the racetrack and to the drivers? Well, it doesn't matter what day they run the Knoxville Nationals. It's still the Knoxville Nationals. I spoke to Mark Kinzer. He had a restless night last night. He's on the front row, a lot of pressure. Everybody expecting him to win. The racetrack is a little faster right now. I think the cushion won't be as close to the wall. We're gonna have a fast race. Well, we've only got three races for tonight, the C, the B, and the A, so let's go right to the C main lineup. As you can see, they've already pushed them off. Ed Lynch has six Pennsylvania wins in 1997. Lance Blevins, the National Sprint Bowl Rookie of the Year back in 1993. Tim Engler, 13 tractor pull titles. He's gonna try to win Knoxville this week. Hey, taking a look back deeper into the lineup, Kevin Pilot, the 1995 Skagit Dirt Cup champion alongside of Leonard Lee, picked up his first career Knoxville feature win earlier this year. Kelly Kinzer in the lineup in the 4K. Of course, he was a World of Outlaw feature winner earlier this year, filling in for Mark Kinzer. Donnie Schantz trying to lay claim to the World of Outlaw Rookie of the Year in 1997. Steve Beitler won the D-Main last night before the tornadoes hit. Mike Peters, a former NCRA champion. 
Tommy Estes Jr., 1997 NCRA winner. He's in the lineup as well. Let's go downstairs now to meet the two guys who'll be working pit road for us. And Bobby Gerald, who do you like in the C feature? Ralph, it is so hard to pick a guy out of this C feature because there's so much talent. Just between two drivers, Gary Wright and Todd Schaefer, over 350 career feature event wins. But I think the guy that's going to be the rabbit here in the C main is Ed Lynch Jr. in car number 2L. He's starting on the pole. He put a hurting on the field in the C scramble the other night, coming from 10th all the way up to first. He's going to be awfully tough. Now joining me in the pits, as usual, is Dave Reed. Bobby, another car to keep your eyes on tonight is Donnie Schatz out of Minot, North Dakota. He was seemingly on his way to the A main on Wednesday night after qualifying second, was running second in the uh, in the in his heat race that night when a $15 part put him in the wall, totaled his race car. He, additionally, he had motor problems, finds himself right in the middle of tonight's C main, but he's got a brand new bullet under the hood and with an elbows up attitude, he still thinks he can go to tonight's big dance. There's Donnie Schatz in the 15, getting ready to go. Two drivers out of this C feature to the B. We're green at the Knoxville National. Blevins on the outside in the Citgo 21, the orange car, and Ed Lynch hanging tough. The rainbow covered 2L on the inside. Folks have been watching us the last few nights. You can see the difference in the racetrack right now. There's a lot, of, lot more brown than, than black. There is a black strip right through the center. That will go blacker as, as races go on, the more race cars get on it. Uh, by A main, it'll probably be black. But like I said, I, I don't think the cushion will be quite as high and close to the fence. Lynch really laying claim to the lead at this point. There's Donnie Schatz working his way up. Tim Schaefer right there in the 55J in front of him. Donnie saw it on the steering wheel going into turn three. They got the Schaefer car in front of him as well. Todd Schaefer, the 88 car. Just in a few laps, notice into three and four, you see more and more shiny, more black already. The track was really hard packed last night before the rain came. That was a good thing. The, the water didn't soak in and make it all muddy and sloppy. If most of it ran off. Everybody had to leave all their equipment in the infield overnight. The only thing that wasn't in the infield was the haulers. All the equipment stayed in there. Schaefer and Schatz really going at it. Schaefer on the outside and the 88, Todd Schaefer. And Donnie Schatz in that 15. Todd Schaefer from Pennsylvania, runs Port Royal, Williams Grove Weekly. Donnie goes by, coming out of turn four. Remember, only two cars out of this going on to the B. And that's to Whoa, the that's, Real loose there. Yeah, yeah, he got up in the moisture there a little bit and got sideways. They go onto the B, but they have to go to the tail of the B. And that's a long way up through the B main. And hopefully they, it's been done. Myself, I've done it. Uh, Doug Wolfgang, some others that have done it. Come through the C and the B. Up, uh, Kelly Kinzer. Kelly Kinzer. Impact with something, obviously, as you see the left front tire peeled back and the nose wing smashed there. So Kelly Kinzer brings out the first yellow of the night. Welcome back to South Central Iowa. On the pole tonight in the feature race for $100,000 to win is the man who won it a year ago. And Mark Kenzer, just because you are the defending champion doesn't make it easier. It might make it harder. Well, you know, there's a lot of pressure uh, just, just making the race. Uh, we're in the race and we're on the front row. You know, the team's done a heck of a job and uh, uh, we're ready to get out there and get it on. You can't wait. I know that. There's a lot of conjecture about this racetrack. Is it going to be a heavy power track? But it's slick like it was, say, on Friday night. I think the track will probably have a little bit more moisture to it. Uh, had a lot of rain last night. Uh, it's not blowing off quite as much as I thought it would. So uh, I think you're going to see a heck of a race. Have a safe race. Thank you, Steve. Okay, right now, here's Bobby Gerald, the man that will start on the outside of the front row. That's right, Steve. And he just happens to be the winningest driver in the history of Knoxville Raceway, Danny the Dude Lasoski. And Danny, you came close in 1992 to winning the Nationals. You finished second. Could tonight be your night? Oh, we sure hope so. We got a great car underneath us with Chris Black being the car owner, Maxim Chassis, and uh, Bob Wessel building us a good engine. We're just going to give her 100%. We got the uh, best starting position we've had in a long time, and we're just going to put the hammer down and see what happens. The dude says that the, the delay has not changed his approach to tonight's racing at all, Dave Reef. I'm down in the pits with Dave Blaney, the Buckeye Bullet out of Cortland, Ohio, who will be starting seventh tonight. And you talk about perfect attendance. 15 times this guy's been to the Nationals, 15 times you're in the A main. Another good chance for you tonight, Dave. Yeah, 15 meant one one yet, so I don't know what kind of percentage that is, but uh, we got a good shot. We've been running good all week. Uh, we just go out there and see what happens. What a week for Dave Blaney. First the Amico sponsorship, and now that perfect attendance record keeps right on going. 
They'll go green at the orange cone to uh, add to what Dave Reef was talking about. If you didn't hear already, earlier in the week we announced uh, for you that Dave Blaney will be carrying the Amico colors in 1998. The brand new sprint car is black with the number 93. We're back to green flag racing and a big jump for Crawley. Tim Crawley, the 87, has gotten a transfer spot for that. He has gotten around Levens. Angler now sits in fourth in the red 73. The leader is still Ed Lynch Jr. in the 2L. Uh, turn four, down the front straightaway. Again, you can see that some strips of black, a little bit of brown. You heard Mark Kinzer talk about the racetrack being faster. Some think that this faster racetrack takes a little advantage away from Mark Kinzer. And here comes Donnie Schatz. You see the 15 sliding in on the bottom side. The well, current World of Outlaw Rookie of the Year point leader is just a couple of spots out of a transfer. Yep, he found some spots on the racetrack that uh, his car liked in him. His lance gets sideways, busts the tires loose. He's gonna get another one. There goes Donnie, right around the bottom. That'll put him up into third if he can get around Blevins. Of course, only the top two cars will go on now, remember, to the B. Levinson didn't let him get around there easy. He has the momentum around the top. Again, you can stay up there and, and, and keep your RPMs up and keep your momentum up. It's hard, you got a yellow flag. Yep, problem over in turn three, Morrow. Matt Morrow, the uh, AC Delco number two. There he sits. Unstrapped, looking at something there. See a little steam or smoke. Can't really see from here what uh, what he's looking for. Doesn't look like he hit anything. Maybe it's, it's some kind of an engine problem. Morrow, one of the top Knoxville track rookie of the years. Here's a look at your top five for the C main. Ten laps are completed, just five left. Two cars will transfer from this straight to the B. Ed Lynch and Tim Crawley have that right now. Donnie Schatz is the guy on the move, Brad. And Lance Blevins, we're hearing, has a left rear tire that is slowly losing air. So Donnie might be able to get Lance quickly on the restart here. And then he's going to have, there's a look at that tire. Now, what will that do to the car? Well, that puts a whole bunch more stagger in the car, which means the left rear you want smaller to help roll the corner well. Obviously, you can see how low it is. It's even smaller. It'll make the car loose. As he enters the corner, the back of the car will want to get out from under him which should give Donnie Schatz an advantage on the restart. Ed, the Ed Lynch, excuse three. me, Brad, who is leading right now, hasn't made the A main here at the Nationals since 1995. Even if he wins this one, he's still going to get through the B from the very back to get into this year's Nationals. And of course, we'll go racing once they cross that orange cone. Let's see if Donnie goes to the inside. Oh, Lance goes to the inside. Donnie's going to try him on the outside. Shots on the bottom. He should get him coming off the turn. See how, boy, you can see how low that tire is. That, under throttle like that, it's it, it's stretched out. It's blown up. And the more he runs, the more air pressure you get back in. The heat will actually put air back in the tire. The yellow and the cautions uh, are what, what kills him. If he rides around it too long, it'll go flat. Similar to what you see with a dragster tire, how exactly, it grows. Exactly, yep. And we got another one pulling off down the back straightaway as we continue to race. Leonard Lee, it looks like, pulling down. There's Crawley. He's got the final transfer spot right now. Brad, do you think he can catch him? Where's he got to go on the track? Well, it, it, there's only three laps left, and he's not gaining enough right now that uh, I, it's going to be tough for him to catch him. Crawley has a lot of experience in 360s, picking up a handful of wins this year. Schatz is really going to have his work cut out for him to catch him at this point. Ed Lynch, meanwhile, is pretty comfortable in the lead. There's a good look at the 2L. Real nice guy out of Pennsylvania. One of the real mo more popular drivers on the tour is Doug Clark gives him the white flag. Going to get a, possibly another win for his new baby boy that was born a week ago, as he mentioned the other night on our telecast. Boy, is he ever proud of the two. Boy, maybe he's bringing some good luck here. Ed Lynch making his way to the checkered flag in the C main. Ed Lynch is going on to the B, as is Tim Crawley. Tony Schatz put out quite an effort but he will come up one spot short of continuing on into tonight's program. Donnie Schatz could possibly still have a shot uh, if somebody scratches. He'd be first alternate, 
it's a long shot, but he could possibly still get in. So they'll get the car ready, fueled up, just in case. The A main hot lap session is getting set as this huge crowd has stuck around over four nights. You know, racing with us finally here on the fifth night of the 1997 Amico Knoxville Nationals. This is only the third time in history of the event that it's been run on Sunday. Let's go down to Bobby Gerald who's standing by with the winner of the C main. Well, as we thought, Ed Lynch was the rabbit, and uh, they didn't catch you there, Ed. Now, how tough does it become to start at the back of the B when you know they're transferring four? Well, it becomes very tough. Uh, the track is widening out now, so it'll be a little bit more grooves. Uh, so I'm real anxious to get going here, and I got to say hi to my son, little Ed, and Cy, and uh, I'm ready to go. All right, we wish you good luck in the B main. Thank you very much. Well, you got the rabbit. I got the hard charger. 18th to third, unfortunately, Donnie Shots. That's one position out of transferring. Explain the disappointment if you can. Well, you know, we come here on Wednesday night, and we were second fast, and uh, we were on second in our heat, and something broke. So, you know, all we had to do was finish the heat, and we were locked in the A, and uh, we felt like we had a good car and a good motor to even make through the C and the B tonight. But, you know, we fell one spot, one spot short in the C, and, uh, you know, we'll just have to come back next year and give it another shot. But running for the rookie title, there's always going to be another year. Best of luck. Thank you. Well, Donnie will go on with the rest of the tour to Wyoming, where he'll try to hold on to his rookie of the year title. Joe Gertie, you are on board in the A main hot lap session. looking down at him and then you go with this view. What do you think, Brad? What do you see from his perspective? What's he checking out? What does he see on the track? Well, you can see him moving around. That's what he's doing. He's checking out the track. He's trying to bottom the top. You saw him lift his hand off the steering wheel to pull a tear off off. Just as we did that, we went to the camera and you saw the mud on the camera at the same time. We wiped it clean. So that's, you come down a straightaway, you lift your arm, you rip off a tear off. Right there, he's moving around. Now he's trying the middle. There he is again, sawing on the wheel. They did a tremendous amount of work with the lighting here. The folks at Musco have come in and done all new lights here at Knoxville. How has that changed it for the drivers this year? Oh, it's, it's always better. I mean, you can see so much better, you know, in, in daytime racing, but the track's always bad. Well, this place is like daytime at night. A lot of times at night, there are dark spots on the racetrack, or it's hard to, to actually run the cushion, or, you know, you're running within literally inches of the wall, and if it's dark up there, it's hard to get against the fence and, and without hitting it. Well, Dave Reef is caught up with one of the stars for the B main. Dave? I'm down with Jeff Swindell getting ready to strap in his Gold Eagle machine and go out. Jeff, you standing up on the top wing there during that A lap, A main qual hot lap session there, and also the C main. Looks like track maybe slicking off. Oh, there ain't no doubt about it. The track's really coming around to, to slick. It went, came from uh, pretty nice to dead slick real fast. Uh, the main problem right now is all the 20s that everybody's running on the tires right now, it's tearing them down to almost bald. So hopefully we got enough tire to last this B, and then it might slick up and get easier on tires, and again, it might take rubber and get harder on tires. So we'll just have to wait and see. You'll learn a lot coming up in the B main. Bobby Gerald? Stevie Smith starts outside of the front row alongside Jeff Swindell. And Stevie, what do you think about what the racetrack's going to do? How abrasive is it? It's getting real abrasive. They're wearing the tires down over halfway, and that was only a 12-lap event. So it's it's going to be quite a bit different than it has been the last couple nights you guys go with a pretty hard compound yeah we're going to go medium we only have to make 22 laps so we're going to we're hoping for the best stevie smith should be in good shape to transfer into tonight's a main they'll take four ralph one of the guys everybody is looking at for the a main tonight uh, has never won this race and he is standing by with steve evans well, that's true, but the driver of the Pennzoil number 22 car, Jack Houghtonschild, you've had a pretty good Knoxville Nationals. You won Thursday night. Earlier in the year, you've had good luck here, especially against Mark Kenzer. Yeah, the Pennzoil Elton uh, car has been going real good uh, actually all year, and uh, we've been running a lot better here at Knoxville. Guy Forbrook's got the, the car working real good, so uh, we think we'll be all right for tonight. Starting outside row number three, you can't wait for something to happen. You have to make it happen. Yeah, well, uh, we lost a row here yesterday in the scramble, so uh, 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 we're just going to, you know, try and make up for that and uh, just see if we can get up to the front. Have fun. Thank you. Bobby Gerald. 
Well, Steve Kinzer, of course, is an 11-time Knoxville Nationals champion. And, Steve, you were just out for A-Main hot laps. A lot of guys concer concerned about uh, tire wear already this early in the night. Does that surprise you? Well, uh, this thing usually it's at a point where it's hard on tires, and, and then it usually starts getting a little bit easier on them uh, uh, as it starts laying a, a little bit of a, a rubber down on it. Uh, this thing won't hardly, it hasn't taken rubber all week, so we just have to see what happens. Uh, our concern is we're just a little bit slow right now, so we'll go to work on this thing and see if we can help it some. You struggled a little bit on Thursday night, and then you had the big blow up on Friday night. Are, are you concerned going into tonight's AMA? Well, yeah, we felt pretty good uh, the night we blew up, um, but uh, we lost that motor, and, and it's the first time we got out with this engine here, but uh, uh, it, it didn't feel real happy. It's, it's hard to tell with a full load of fuel sometimes, but uh, uh, we'd like to have a little better than what it is. Good luck to you tonight, Steve. Sammy Swindell standing alongside Dave Reef. And he's taking a look at the big right rear here, too. The Goodyear tires obviously starting to become a concern maybe out there. Well, the track's a little bit different, and uh, you know, it's usually been harder on the tires you know in the middle stages and it seems to have got easier every night you know later in the race or the more races they've run so uh this is about what i'd expect you know but uh, i didn't think it would be quite this quite this bad but they still got a little race to run and uh it should ease up on them some so uh, you know, i hope we can pick the right ones to put on this channel lock gambler and get it up front he'll be starting third tonight No problems with the weather tonight. We are back with the Pennzoil World of Outlaws, Marion County Fairgrounds, Knoxville, Iowa. Here is your B main lineup where we will take four drivers out of this to the back of the A main. Jeff Swindell, the Las Vegas winner this year. Stevie Smith with three wins in 97 in row one. Jamie Moyle, an Australian standout, now calls Knoxville home. And Danny Jackson, or Danny Smith in this one as well, the 19th Nationals appearance for him. Keith Kaufman in row six. Dale Blaney, a two-time All-Star champ. In row eight, Randy Hannigan. He was the winner of 1997 Skagit Dirt Cup. That's one of the biggest races on the West Coast. Now looking for one of the biggest races of all. Tatnell to start alongside of him. Randy Kinzer in here in a car owned by his brother, Steve. And Dion Hindi lining up alongside of him. And of course, the two transfers, Ed Lynch and Tim Crawley, out of the sea. Let's check in with Dave Reed. Well, just in case anyone's interested in who's who's leading the Amico Knoxville Nationals Rookie of the Year chase, well, the two cars that are at the top of the pack right now are in this race. Keep your eyes on the 47T car, Tim St. Arnold. Also the 71A car of Randy Anderson. Both those guys are regulars here at Knoxville. Bobby? Well, if you're wondering why Dale Blaney is so far back in the inside of the sixth row of the B main, you're probably not alone. A fuel pickup problem in qualifying on Thursday night kept Dale from a better starting spot. He was the Nationals Rookie of the Year in 1992, and he won the B main last year. Joey Saldana, Brad, has just pulled down his road, and that would be the key for Donnie Schatz. We talked earlier, first yep. alternate. And there he is. He has already pushed off. What a shame for Joey Saldana and the Brad Gray car, but Tony Shots has to be smiling. Yeah, unfortunately, we lost our in-car, too, our Mopar in-car on pit road. And they're saying, no, you're here. Well, Lineup is set. Boy, that's a shame. Wait all week, have problems before we ever get to start. Boy, what a disappointment for those guys. There's the officials holding him. We're hearing that the ignition was the problem. So the B main now getting set, four to go from here. Getting ready to take the green. Now they have to be side by side at this white chalk line you'll see right there come, come, coming in your picture. To Bobby with Joey Saldana. It's a fuel pickup problem for Joey Saldana. There were I don't think they're going to let Joey go as we've already gone green. Well, you saw the problems for Keith Kaufman. It gets even worse for Dion Hindi. Kaufman was in the U2, and Hindi is around, and he'll bring out the yellow. Here's a look at the start and where all the congestion was. This is after Kaufman got himself re-straightened back out in the U2. You can see he's still way up in the cushion in that blue car, but then watch Hindi in the bright neon 11. 
Just got in there and about hit the 47 of St. Arnold. Got sideways and got and uh, got a little help from behind. Let's check in with Bobby Gerald. Well, I'm standing alongside Joey Saldana, who is obviously disappointed. Joey, uh, how heartbreaking is this? You wait around for two days, and now you don't even get to race. Well, I mean, our first night qualifying, we screwed up. Maybe we shouldn't be right here, but uh, we were just trying to get the motor to run a little better, and I guess we leaned it down too much or something. Tough break for Joey Saldana. Back to the green flag with Jeff Swindell in front. Not for long. Stevie Smith now as they come off of turn two. And then a three-card battle for second. Look at the pack all stacked up behind him. And we get a false start from flagman Doug Clark. He throws out a yellow. And we're hearing that they're looking at Donnie Schatz for being a little bit aggressive on the start, Brad. Yep, talked about it before. He's just warning him. If it's furled up and he shakes that, that's a warning. When you get one warning, if he unfolds that puppy, you're in trouble. It's, you all, know, over. it's all over. But if you're Donnie, I guess you're going to gamble on it because you're at the very back anyway. Yep, you get, you get that one morning, you got to try it, you know. But I don't think you'll try it again. Remember, four cars going to the A. Smith as we come off of turn four with a good fight going on for second place. They're Jeff red. Swindell in red. red. We've got two cars involved over in turn three and Donnie Schatz. No, nope. I was going to say I, thought I was looking for Donnie Schatz for a second, yes. but it's the 87 car and the 47 car. The 87 car is Tim Crawley. The 47 T actually is Tim St. Arnold. That is the team car to Johnny Herrera. See if we can figure out what happened here. Watch up along the back of your frame, back by the wall. You can see it already starting in turn three. We got together. Really hard to see who started what, but uh, 87 doing a, a flip that didn't even touch the wing. And side for side on over the end, and uh, gonna get another look here at the the end of it. Look like maybe the 47. Spun, St. Arnold spun in the 87. Every year during Knoxville Nationals Week, the city of Knoxville has a wonderful Middle America old time nostalgic parade down Main Street. This year, the parade marshal was done under our own Brad Doty, but somehow the parade kind of went to the dogs, you know what I mean? But the Shriners were along to save the day until they spotted a spaceship, a very identifiable non-flying object. Now, fans have been here this week from all over the world, but the largest contingent from Australia, 400 strong. This is Ron and Margaret Lee. Welcome, where are you from? From Melbourne, Victoria, Melbourne, Australia. Now, how does sprint car racing uh, down under differ from here in the States? Uh, we only run 372 cubic inch engines and not 410s. And then ours are a little bit slower than what we see here. And Margaret, uh, Friday night there was an Australian versus US race. Show them who won. Uh, hang up, hold that up there. Skip Jackson. And who are you rooting for tonight? Well, I'd love to see an Australian win, but maybe Doug Wolfgang. You got Gary Brazier in the A feature. Yeah, no, I would like to see Gary get up and win. But I think not this year, maybe next year. Hope you have a great time the remainder of your trip. Thanks a lot. Bobby Gerald? All right, mate. I'm down here with Tim Crawley right now. That was pretty bad, wasn't it? Tim, uh, what happened there? Your first trip to the Knoxville Nationals. It did a nice job in the C, but it ended a little early here in the B. Well, with the crowd we've got here, you can't lay back. You've got to charge right off the bat while the cars are still bunched up. And I got in here, the car spun out in front of me, just didn't leave me anywhere to go. And I clipped the back end of him, spun around into the fence. And Sorry to see you out. The 1994 ASCS champion is done, Dave Reeve. Well, one of the joys of being a car owner means during red flag situations, you don't have a whole lot going on. Remember this man from the Kings Royal, 800 consecutive starts as of that night. Well, tonight it's 810, 811. We haven't figured it out, have we? We do one at a time, 810, 811. 
And you get out here most of the time, too, don't most you? Most of the time, yes. We try to get out here 90% of the time if we can, yeah. And what's the plans for the future for you? Is 900 going to come next year sometime? Well, again, we just do it one at a time. I mean, if 900 comes, if 1,000 comes, we're planning on being here for a while yet. Well, Bob Kramer's going to help this guy. I guarantee they might even make 1,000. Well, they found victory lane in Las Vegas with this car in, uh, earlier this season. Jeff Swindell trying to get out of the B and into the A. He's made the A main in 14 of 19 attempts. So maybe he'll be able to uh, make it again here tonight. Yeah, they admittedly have been struggling a little bit this uh, this season with the Ford. Uh, Ron Shaver, Jack Cornett, who builds uh, Scott Bloomquist's late model engine, working together, trying some new things, and uh, SVO at Ford, they'll get it figured out. As you take a look at the racetrack, Brad, and we get set to go, uh, who do you think this uh, gives an advantage to in the A? Do you think anybody, that, any of the drivers has an advantage on this particular type of surface? Well, it's hard to tell what it's going to do. You heard all of them talking about it. They, everybody's guessing. It's always guesswork, but it's really up in the air right now because the, the, whether it's going to take rubber or not, which that means, you know, if it gets sticky, uh, you know, a lot of times they'll have to go to a harder tire if it grinds tires off, and if it not, uh, it's all a guessing game who puts the right tires on. Ready to go green here in the B main. Still looking to take four out of this. It's a 22 lap affair going on to the A. Dean Jacobs banging the wall on the start that you see Ed Lynch in the middle of it trying to make his way up and Stevie Smith still good on the starts. Old Skip Jackson no slide underneath. Jeff takes second. He did win the uh, Australian challenge we talked about the other night. He lived in Sydney, Australia, but he, he lived right here in Knoxville, about a block away in the summer, and races over here. There's Jeff Swindell making his way down the back stretch through three and four. Skip Jackson, the red and yellow numeral number 55, and behind him is Jeff Swindell, who holds on to third. That is a transfer spot, or not a transfer spot, but a spot going on. Dean Jacobs on the bottom, Keith Coughlin. 71 car there that's coming out of turn two. Dean got over the cushion, really pushed there. Lost some others, Dale Blaney. Yep, the 94 car of Dale Blaney on the bottom, the red car. Dale told me last night he's going to run the World Outlaws next year or quit. That it's time to try something different, and uh, he's ready to go out there and, and jump right into it. Dean Jacobs is on diving through a couple of them there, trying to make his way up through the field to find that transfer position. 71A is Randy Anderson who is running with them in there. That's that black car right there with the white. Ed Lynch coming up on the bottom too, Brad. Comes out Rainbow 2L. Handing in behind him in the 83. Boy, way sideways, Anderson. Anderson. There's Ed Lynch. Look at Ed. He'll take off two cars right there. Yeah, he's going to get him going into turn one. Fine. As you see, five laps completed. He's got a long ways to go to catch our leader, but he is making his way up there. If he gets a break with the yellow, he could be in contention for this one. Back up front we go. That is where our leader is, T.B. Smith. That's yeah, early, only five laps up in the race. It's 22 laps B main, so uh, it, all, it all depends on, you know, as a driver, you, 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 when the yellows hit, how things uh, work your way, traffic, things like that. Get strung out, you need to yellow sometimes. A lot of times you get by somebody, you don't need to yellow. But in this case, when they're strung out like this, the uh, only way to make up ground in a hurry is to have a yellow flag. Stevie Smith was a rookie of the Nationals in 89. And look at Skip Jackson close up on him as they come up in the back of two cars. Kinzer on the bottom of the black 14 and Dion Hindi up top. And that's really going to help Jackson out. Stevie got tied up with uh, behind the two lap cars running side by side. Held him up. Skip Jackson closed right in. Boy, Stevie's Stevie. struggling to get through here. Well, he's loose. Right there, he slid up. His car's a little bit loose. Skip Jackson can run. And look at Jeff Swindell. They got tied up in that lap traffic. Jeff Swindell coming hard on the outside. Skip Jackson loses second place. Jeff Swindell takes that, and they still can't get around Kinzer and Dion. Well, Jeff's moved there. That's a lot of experience. You know, Skip Jackson's a good racer. He runs here weekly, but uh, he doesn't run the amount of races that a guy like Jeff Swindell uh, runs. And, I think that helped Jeff there a little bit. With more on Jeff Swindell, here's Dave Reed. Well, had a chance to talk with J.D. Kramer. They put a 25C on the right rear, and when they came in during that lap one red flag, that tire already had some pretty extensive wear. He fell back to third, but it must be coming back to him now. Jeff Swindell now runs.
Hawkins in the second spot. St. Arnold in the 4017 now is who Stevie Smith is dealing with, and Swindell solidly in second. There's St. Arnold upstairs in the point 47. Stevie gets around him. Jeff Swindell holds on to second, and Skip Jackson still running in third. If, if we have a yellow right there, look at uh, Stevie Smith's left for tire. It looks like it's leaking air too. If he has a yellow, that thing could possibly go flat. Shepard runs in fourth. Jeff Shepard in the white 4J. Bobby Gerald, it's a brand new team for Jeff Shepard. The first race for the new owners, Les and Linda Stewart, the Knoxville Nationals. They bought two cars and a brand new trailer. They jumped in with both feet. And Jeff Shepard's trying to ride them into the national championship right now. Doing a heck of a job. He started seventh, and if it ended right now, he'd be in there. And just behind him, Don Drought, the one BK giving chase. He's in fifth. He's one spot out of the transfer. Top four going on. They've done a tremendous job, that team, Jeff Shepard. The, the air freight oh, the tire on. came apart on Stevie Smith's car. The left rear came apart on Stevie Smith. That is going to take him right out of this. Well, Unbelievable. Well, I just commented. It looked to me like it was going flat. And, I, you know, I thought it would, might hold up. If he had a yellow, I knew it would go flat. It just what happens is it gets so low, the tire gets to wallowing around. We call it just gets to floating around. And it finally built so much heat, it just blows itself apart. Now he's racing with Donnie Shots. Trying to lap Donnie. You can see that tire coming apart right here. Yep, Brad. sure can. See the tread starting to come off? Yeah, it's flat. There yep. it goes. See, it was flat at that point. Wow, it looked it, like it actually came up. Looked like part of the tire came up and actually hit Stevie. You see how it, it could, exploded it right in front of him? Yeah, it could have hit his. Boy, look at Skip Jackson. He caught it right on the front wing. Yeah, luck, yeah. Jeff goes by on the inside. Great job by Stevie Smith to keep that car under control, though. Absolutely. When that thing blows like that, it can turn the car loose instantly. Watch this again. Let's see if part of that hide goes up and you know, can't tell from there. It's already off. Well, see that bar right there, the, the bar going Cross down beside? Bar. That's an extra bar that they have on that car that uh, they built. That could have kept it from hitting him in the arm. Now, this puts Stevie Smith all the way to the back with not many laps remaining, Brad. Yeah, we have, what, eight laps? About eight laps. Eight laps to go. and. Uh, it's going to be real tough for him. Boy, what a what a bad break. Uh, he'll need a lot of yellows and, and uh, a lot of luck, basically. Let's check in with Bobby Jarrett. I find it interesting, guys, that with all the rain, you wouldn't maybe expect the track to be this abrasive. But uh, Andy, you got a first-hand look at Stevie Smith's left rear tire, and and how concerned are you now for your 30 lapper coming up? Well, I don't know. It looked like his tire was going down there uh, about three or four laps before it blew, and what happened? It probably just got so hot that it blew out. Um, track's pretty hard. Uh, it's going to make for an A feature. Andy Hillenberg is excited. We're all looking forward to that 30 lapper. They go green at the orange cone. And here comes Shepard on the bottom. He's in the white four car. He slides back to third. Oh, and Drought up into the wall. Did you see that? Now this is going to be, if Drought can hang on, this would be the first time he's made it into the A. There's Shepard going to the inside of Skip Jackson. That's in turn three. Coming out of turn four. We are in turn one. Drown did continue. You can see him sliding into the picture. Boy, that would have been an unfortunate break for him. Shepard Lane claimed to second. Skip Jackson back to third. Swindell up top. Boy, Shepard. Shepard's closing on him. Shepard yeah. coming out of turn four. Jeff gained a lot of a lot of ground on him. He was eighth in the Nationals here last year. Trying to work his way into the A. Two different lines, Brad. How do you, does it, does it look like one end of the track is better than the other? Upstairs at the bottom and a yellow. That's what Stevie Smith was hoping for. Donnie shots up here in turn four. Look, look at his right rear tire. If we get a shot at it, his right rear tire has got the, the rubber there, you can see it. Almost, Wearing off? Oh, yeah, almost wore down to where it's completely smooth. There's a good look at some of the large crowd that stuck it out here into the fifth night of the Amico Knoxville Nationals for the 37th edition. Today, brief downstairs. And here's a good look, Ralph, at a bald 25 seat tire. That's just how abrasive this racetrack is. Abrasive on both sides. They have elected to change both tires, both the left and the right. It's not pop. They just felt they had a better chance of moving up by coming in and changing the tire, heading to the tail. Donnie Schatz is pushing off. 
Dave said that's a 25C. That is the second hardest that Goodyear makes. Goodyear starts, you start with a 20. There's actually one softer, but the race tire is a 20, then the 25C. Then it's a 40, and then a 62 is the hardest. So uh, if it continues like this, we might see some 62s a main time. How about the McCreary guys like Andy Hillenberg? Will they have an advantage or a disadvantage on this scrimmage? Well, Andy told me that uh, it's usually a, if it gets abrasive like this, he doesn't really have an advantage. Where he feels in McCreary is an advantage where it's a glazed slick. But he'll be okay with them. For more on the tire story, Bobby Gerald. Ralph, it was interesting to see the activity when Donnie Schatz pulled in and just watch all of the guys who are competing in the A main run over and take a look. And Steve Kinzer, very demonstrative when he came over to look at the right rear, he motioned for his crew chief, Scott Gerken, hey, come over here and look at this tire. I mean, they are really blown away by how bad the tire, tire wear is in this B main. And we've still got laps to go. And remember that the A main is longer than the B main, so you've got to think about that as well. Yeah, they've only ran run 16 laps and uh, the A main is 30 laps so basically they'd be halfway through an A main and they're already wore out. Green at the cone, Jeff Swindell, Shepard, Skip Jackson, Don Drowd, Brooke Tattnall, one spot out of a transfer if he can get around Drowd. Look, look what he did, Brooke Tattnall just drove by in the third. I thought he was going to earn the fourth. I thought he was going to get Skip Jackson for third. There's Don Drowd goes right back around. The one BK, the black and yellow car is Don Drowd. Skip Tattnall is in the yellow and red number seven. Both these drivers fighting for their first A main berth at the Knoxville National. Brooke Tattnall, the mechanic, Deuce, Gary Deuce Durrell, who's won the Nationals here with Doug Wolfgang. Uh, let's see, Sammy Swindell. Two time winner of the Nationals is Deuce Durrell. Well, boy, Brooke got a good restart, but uh, Durrell was able to get back by him and it's pulling away at this point. Jeff Swindell opening up a healthy lead. Yeah, Shepard was all over before this restart. and. Uh, Maybe woke Jeff up a little bit. He's got a nice, uh, nice lead there. Look at Jeff pulling away now. The Gold Eagle 7 TW. There's Shepard. There's Skip Jackson. The Orange 55. See how high Jeff is running there. You know, keeping that right rear. If you can keep the right rear up in the moisture, it doesn't. It's not as hard on the right rear. The black you see in the shiny stuff. That's where it's like one of 80 grit sandpaper. I mean, it's uh, really, really coarse, and it'll grind them right off. But up there where Jeff's at, as long as he doesn't have to get down off there a lot to get through traffic things like that, it should be okay. Robert Hubbard spinning the wrenches for Swindell this week. Doing a good job getting his driver, it looks like, into the A-Main at this point. One of the prettiest sprint cars in the in the pit area. White flag from Doug Clark. One to go. Four drivers looking to go on to the A-Main. Tattnall losing ground to drought. Now remember what Jeff did last year. Came out of the B main, came all the way from the back to what, second or third? Way up into the A main. And he's gonna get a shot to do it again. Jeff Swindell will go on to the A main, as will Jeff Shepard, Skip Jackson, Don Drow. And Brooke Tatton will end up one spot short of his first trip to the Amico Knoxville Nationals A main. But he's the first alternate like Donnie That's Schatz right. was, so possibly he can get back. Looks like Dean Jacobs in turn four after the motor expired, maybe? Yeah, he's smoking pretty good, rolling down the front straightaway, but it's after the checkered anyway. And uh, problem for the Frigidaire car. Friday morning here in Knoxville was the annual Drivers versus Celebrities softball game for charity. And apparently our own Ralph Shaheen was the only celebrity. But Ralph also was a pretty darn good athlete, and he socked a solid single you would have thought was a grand slam, the way he grandstanded on first base. But it raised $5,500 for outlaw charities. On the front straight, you can see part of the $2.5 million in improvements that Ralph Capitani and the group here in Knoxville have invested into this racetrack. I would call that a total commitment. And joining me up here in the Hall of Fame suite is Jack Eldon, who is the owner of the Jack Houghton Trail car, number 22. You're just staying out of the way, huh? I certainly do. I, I leave it up to the people that, that work for us. As a car owner, is this really your biggest night of the year? I like this, and I like the historical big one at uh, Eldora. Because you've won that $100,000. You're a businessman, and right now it takes a businessman to really contribute to one of these teams. That's something you, you really have a lot to offer. Well, at least we, we're, we're able to pay the bills and keep the organization running, which is the important thing. How do you like your shot tonight? I think we have a, we have a good chance. But I, I, never, I never look at the future in this sport. We wish you well. Uh, thank you very much. Let's go back down to the infield to Dave Reef. 
We're taking a look at the tire. We'll see this number here, M25C. This is the right rear that came off the back, back end, excuse me, back end of Jeff Swindell's car. Not quite so bad. Jeff, you're able to get out there and run away with this thing. You were the winner, but how come you got a little more rubber left? Well, you know, uh, I think a lot of them guys were going to the bottom in the middle, and the, the middle starting to take a little bit of rubber close, you know, kind of between the middle and the bottom there. I went in there a couple of times. It felt pretty decent because Stevie got to go through traffic down there, so I got to try it out a little bit. It felt pretty good, but it wasn't quite locked in yet. Uh, the guys said we were better on the top there, so I went back to the top and just planted her down on the floor. For about two laps, the thing's really nice. It starts to gain a little heat in the right rear. It starts to get a little loose, and I got to start backpedaling a little bit from the middle of the corner off. But... Uh, I mean, I run her hard as I could run her, and, and uh, if, if I need any more, I'm, I'm pretty much in trouble. But I think it's going to come to the rubber down low on the racetrack. Jeff Swindell moving on to the A-Main. Let's go down to Camp Carl, Bobby. That's right. Carl Kinzer is the man at Knoxville. He has 12 national championships, and this is when he does his best work, right before the push-off time for the main event. He came here in 1967 to run his first one, and now 30 years later and 12 national championships later, he works on the bleeder valve for Mark Kinzer, who is just buckling in. They won this race last year as a father and son team. And as Carl works his magic, we'll try to step in here and get a quick word with him. Carl, there's been a lot of concern about the tire wear out on the racetrack during the B main. What do you think it's gonna do? And uh, and can you lead Mark to another win? Well, we're putting on hard tires. Just hope they don't uh, get hot and seal over. So if we do, uh, if you see us going backwards, that's what happened. Now, yesterday you told me before we got rained out that you had already had your victory ice cream, and I'm wondering if you had some more victory ice cream earlier today. Strawberry. Strawberry's the flavor. Victory ice cream has already been had. Carl says it's in the bag. With the A-Main just minutes away, and here in the Hall of Fame suite enjoying himself, that is Steve Kinzer's dad, Bob, and he really started it all for the Kinzer clan back in the early 50s. I asked him, how are Steve's chances tonight? And he said, well, it's probably going to take a miracle. Well, Steve feels a little more confident about that than his dad. But earlier this week, in fact, on Wednesday, there was another superstar here in Knoxville. And the fans waited patiently for an autograph from the king. And I don't mean King Kenser, but Richard Petty. And Petty, as always, obliged as many as he possibly could. Bench racing with the fans, telling stories, having a great time. And his driver, Bobby Hamilton of Winston Cup, was also here. And he also was more than willing to sign autographs. And as long as Richard was on the grounds, why not pay a visit to his STP teammate, Andy Hillenberg, who tonight will be trying to win the Knoxville Nationals for the first time in that $100,000. What did Richard think of this deal? Cars is they can look to Winston Cup and sort of follow the way they did things, which is what they're doing here in Knoxville. I mean, they got all these fancy uh, suites and, and they've expanded their uh, grandstands. They're taking care of the fans. They're fixing things up. They're painting things up. Things are are so much better than it was four years ago when I got here. Uh, so you can see they're trying to clean their act up from inside, and that's what NASCAR did, and that's that's what uh, they're trying to do here with the World Picture Outlaws. Mark and as long as they do that, then they'll continue to grow. If you love sprint cars on dirt, welcome to heaven. Knoxville, Iowa, the Marion County Fairgrounds. This is it, the big half mile and the $100,000 payday for the winner of the 37th annual Amico Knoxville Nationals. We're about to claim a ch crown a champion in 30 laps. Here's your lineup. Mark Kinzer, the reigning series champ and the 96 Knoxville champ on row number one, alongside of the winningest driver here in its history, 67 wins, Danny Lasoski. Row two, the 1983 Nationals champ, Sammy Swindell, and Greg Hodden at the 1993 World of Outlaw Rookie of the Year. Row three, Johnny Herrera, the 1995 Knoxville track champion, and Jack Hoddenshield, 11 wins in Knoxville, including this past 4th of July. Row four, Dave Blaney, the 1995 World of Outlaws champion, and Joe Gertie, currently ninth in the Outlaw points. Back to the next row, Craig Delansky got this right just three weeks ago. And Steve Kinzer, 11 Knoxville wins, 14 times a World of Outlaw champion. Tyler Walker, winner of four All-Star races in 97. And Gary Brazier, the multi-time Australian champ. Row six, Frankie Kerr, three times the All-Star Series champion. Kenny Jacobs, Mouse, with over 60 wins in his career. Back on to row number nine, Andy Hillenberg, fifth in the World of Outlaw points, his ninth AMA. Doug Wolfgang, five times the winner of the Nationals. Terry McCarl, one All-Star win in 1997. Kevin Gobrecht, three Williams Grove wins in 1997. 
row 11. This is where we get into the drivers who have come out of the B. Jeff Swindell and Jeff Shepard and row 12, Australia's Skip Jackson and Don Droud making his first Amico Knoxville Nationals. And we go on board with our gum out camera on board with Joe Gurney. It's a little different angle, off, right off the left front bumper, left side of the front bumper. Just stay away from the guy in front of you, Joe. To Bobby Gerald with more on the crew chief for Danny Lasoski. Guys, absolutely one of the most fantastic stories this week at Knoxville concerns the car owner for Danny Lasoski. His name is Chris Black. He's only 30 years old and he's only been to the track three times. He doesn't own a home, he lives in an apartment, and he has all his money in this number one race car that's starting on the outside of the front row of the Knoxville Nationals. This is kind of Danny Lasoski's personal house car. If Danny doesn't drive it, nobody does. They have won 50% of their races together, half Chris Black and Danny Lasoski. The four wide. Salute to the fans. Pins on World of Outlaws do it at every race. And in Knoxville, boy, is it going to get a roar from the crowd when they come around the front straightaway. Get set. Back there at home, wherever you are watching the 37th annual Knoxville Nationals. Here's what Knoxville's all about as they come across the front straightaway. bringing it all to you live day five of the 37th annual Amico Knoxville Nationals boy you can't get any closer to it than that right in the middle of the four wide with the Pennzoil world of outlaws you know I've talked before these guys race so much so often that it, it, it kind of gets to be routine but the Nationals you can feel it in the atmosphere they notice the crowd here they see it they people the crowd stomps their feet on these aluminum bleachers you can almost hear it from the race cars there's so much adrenaline flowing in that first few, few, few rows that. Uh, Let's check in with Dave Reed for a quick thought on what, what to expect. Well, I tell you, it's going to be an interesting race because the race track itself getting very abrasive on tires. It's going to figure to the guy who can put on the harder tire and then get his way through lap traffic. I think by far that favors Dave Blaney here tonight. Bobby Gerald. Guy Forbrook, the crew chief for Jack Hoddenshield, has said that this is his best chance to win the Knoxville Nationals. He was second to Steve Kinzer in 1992, only lost by four car lengths, Steve Evans. Interesting. If a driver jumps to the start, he immediately goes to the back. No second chances. Mark Kinzer and Danny Lasowski had a little meeting of the minds in the pits this afternoon and agreed they're not going to play any games. They're going to roll to that chalk line together and mash the throttle simultaneously. Green of the Knoxville Nationals. Here we go. Steve Kinzer. Steve Kinzer right up along the wall down in turns one and two. Mark Kinzer is your leader. Danny Lasoski is second. Sammy Swindell is third. Steve Kinzer has gathered it back up. Look at the fight for the lead. Puts the dude out front. And then Mark Kinzer takes it right back for him as we complete lap number one. You know, we saw Carl messing with his tires there. He had the number rubbed off. We don't know. And he said hard whether that be a 40 or the 62 or exactly what he did put on. Sammy Swindell on the bottom in the silver channel lock number one. The 25th anniversary paint scheme on that car. Mark Kinzer out front leading it. Sammy to the bottom. Danny Lasoski up top trying to get into that cushion. We interval back now to fourth position. That's where Jack Hodenshield is battling it out with Craig Hodnett. That's Dave Blaney in the 10th. Blaney time. actually, Hodenshield is actually fourth. He's yeah. fighting with uh, Johnny Herrera. Right there, just went on the outside of him coming down the front straightaway. That's Hodnett. In the 11, there's Herrera in the 47. Neil Saunders' car. Hot Shield upstairs in the Pennzoil 22. Way upstairs. Boy, he had both, looked like both rear tires over the cushion in turns, in turns three and four. What a night he had here on Thursday. He's running up top. Here comes Blaney up top as well. I'll tell you, I mentioned it before, Dave Blaney runs the top as well, not better than, than anybody at any racetrack. This is the fight for fourth. Danny Lasoski just in front of this. Look at this battle back here. Terry McCarl in the 8H, the yellow car. That's Frazier in the white car at the back of that. And McMahon in the Mopar. 
Here's the fight up front with the leaders. Going in. Mark Kinzer in the 5M, the white car, and Sammy Swindell trying to close in. Sorry, Rob, that's why I was going into turn one, the last lap. Sammy drove up within two or three car lengths of Mark. Just coming out of turn four down the front straightaway. Right there, you can see it again. Uh, Sammy closed up a little bit going into turn one. Seven to eight laps into this, Brad, where will we start to see that tire wear coming into play if they've chosen wrong? Within the next 10 laps, probably, Ralph. From what we've seen before, about 10 to 15 laps. But they obviously have a lot harder on than what the, uh, there's plenty. Around hot and shield. Yep, they're catching Danny Lasoski, which will become the fight for third. Blaney holds on to fourth. Hot and shield is actually fifth right now in the Penzo cart. There's Lasoski, the white with the purple number one on the side. Bondin on the bottom. Smoke pouring off the back of that car. I don't know. I think that was tire smoke, Ralph. I, I couldn't tell for sure, but I, I think maybe that's a little bit of tire smoke. So there, Blaney, Sammy has got around Mark. Yes, yeah, Sammy Swindell has taken the lead. That was the 1983 a... winner of the Knoxville Nationals out front leading it now. Sammy has only won once in 23 tries at the Nationals. But here comes Mark. He's not going to give up easy. And Sammy's going to get bogged behind some traffic, too, on the bottom there. That's Wolfgang right in front of him. 71 in the motor car. Oh, and we got one upside down. Don That's Don Drown. Oh, and oh. Mark Kinzer and Sammy Swindell together. Oh, my four. goodness. Oh, no. Mark Kinzer and Sammy Swindell together in turn four. This brings out the red flag because of drought to begin with. Oh, no. Unbelievable. Now, if they can restart, they both go to the tail. Their nationals are over. And you can see the damage to the front of Mark Kinzer's car. The side panel ripped off of the wing on Sammy Swindell's car. You can see Sammy, that there. Look, Sammy, look, Sammy got out of his car. Furious. Look, yep, got out of his car and just, oh, so frustrated. I'll tell you that uh, as a look. Look at Sammy, how mad Sammy is. Sammy doesn't show much emotion. Amy ever. Swindell, his wife. Who are they? Is he looking at Danny Lasoski? Or is he just well, yelling in general? Well, I think, I think. Oh, he's just yelling in general, I think. It looked like he was oh, yelling the frustration. in the direction of the one. Ralph, the frustration. I mean, you're just mad at the world. I mean, this is Knoxville. Let's take okay, a look at this crowd. again. There's Don Droud. There they are in the background. Oh, they oh did, he, what he's okay. Together. What he's mad about is Mark got in the back of him. What happened there? Mark was so close to the back of Sammy. Sammy saw Droud, got out of the throttle. Mark couldn't see it because he was tucked up behind Sammy so close. He got in the back of him. That is what Sammy is so upset about. Unbelievable. There's Droud. Who has walked away from his car, which was a whole separate incident to Dave Reef with Don Droud. Don, obvious disappointment. Tell me what happened. Well, I can't say enough about this Burger King Doc Dr. Pepper Network team. We got, got a real good run there going into B. Got going up through there, and all the guys out here that you think you could pass cleanly would be Steve Kinzer, and he just took me out going in here. Obviously disappointed, but the body okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Up and over hard, Don Drought out of the race. Tensions running very, very, very high here at the 37th Annual Amico Knoxville Nationals. Welcome back to Knoxville. They have finally gotten the work in 5M of Mark Kinzer down into the pit area. Let's take a look at the replay. Now, this one you've seen already. Here's Drought who goes over. Now, watch the top of the screen. There you see Mark and Sammy get together. And, Brad, you figure it's because Sammy lifted. He saw Drought. This one we haven't seen, and Mark was probably blocked being behind his view block being behind Sammy. Yeah, you could see it there. Sammy just slowed. Mark was on the outside. Sammy saw Drought. The track was open in front of Sammy. He saw it, got out of the throttle. Mark didn't see it and just climbed over the back of him. And it's to Bobby Gerald with more on this story. Well, Sammy Swindell's car is being repaired right now. Sammy continues to walk around the race car. He is overlooking it. And Sammy Swindell is, uh, is still pretty upset right now. Sammy, if you can, describe for us what happened in that incident. And, and is your car going to be able to continue? Yeah, we can continue. We got a lot of stuff tore up. I mean, the guy wasn't very smart just to run all over the whole car. You know, the yellow light was out, but uh, that's not the first time he's done that this year, you know. But uh, we'll get the channel lock car back there and salvage what we can, but uh, they'll probably wait on him to fix his. All right, a very unhappy Sammy Swindell. He will have to go to the back of the pack, guys, because he did change his right rear tire, Dave Reef. 
I'm down with Mark Kinzer. Work hot and heavy. You got brand new left side headers, a steering arm, a brand new front axle. It's Jerry Russell and a host of other race car drivers over here trying to help out Mark. Mark, what happened? Well, uh, you know, me and Sammy got to running uh, pretty hot there for the lead, and uh, I guess a guy turned over up ahead of us. Uh, I was pretty close to Sammy. I, I didn't see the accident, and uh, he checked up for it, and that's when I seen it, and it, it was a little late. I got in the back of him, and uh, we're fortunate uh, we're down here just just able to replace parts and, and not in the heck of a worse shape. You got to talk to Carl on the crew. Is this car going to be fixed? Uh, well, we're we're kind of struggling right now, and uh, we got a whole front end. We got to put on it a header, uh, some radius rods on the other side. Uh, got a lot of guys down here helping us out. We may make it. Believe it or not, it's pretty busy. Guess you don't need me to tell you that, though. Brad, I have never seen Sammy Swindell so upset. Well, like I said earlier, Sammy's not a very mo emotional person, but this is the Knoxville Nationals, and he's pretty upset with Mark. They've had trouble early in the year, but Mark, this wasn't intentional. Mark did not see the yellow light. Uh, Sammy would probably say he should have, but uh, you're racing hard, going for the lead of the Nationals, and, and he was just uh, trying to concentrate on Sammy and got in the back of him when he backed it, when he checked up, and that's what happens sometimes. Now, the beneficiary of all this, Steve Evans, is Dave Blaney. Absolutely. After that bizarre incident, Dave Blaney, you are now in a position to win your second $100,000 win in seven days. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to be far from easy. It's going to, it's turning more into a one lane racetrack here and and lap cars are going to be really tough. So, um, yeah, I mean, that was not, we were coming harder and harder, but I, you just can't believe something like that happened to those guys. But uh, hey, we'll just try our best. And according to his crew, they're pretty confident that he can win that hundred grand because they gave me the this sign when I asked him how the tires look they said gone Brad this should move uh, Danny Lasoski up to second Jack Honshield up to third so we still got a heck of a fight towards the finish of the 37th annual Amico Knoxville Nationals the dude strapped in waiting to get a shot at Blaney Don Drought's car being pulled off the racetrack and here's a look at the top five as they stand right now Hotten it up to second. Well, that changed while all the other action apparently was taking place on the racetrack with uh, Sammy and uh, Mark. And here's a look at the second five. Good run for Larry Pinnegar. Yeah, top 10. Paul McMahon there, ninth in the Mopar car. Good run for him. Well, we are looking at 10 laps in. So 20 laps still to go. And even though Sammy and Mark are sent to the back right now, but this is anything going to be a walk away for Blaney at this point. He's going to have his hands full here with 20 laps. Oh, absolutely. There's still some really good cars right behind him. And, and uh, Sammy, I believe, is going to get back out. But you know, like we said, he will go to the tail. Uh, if Mark gets back out, so will he. But uh, 20 laps is a long way, but it's a long, long way for them guys in the back. Mark has not been pushed off yet. That was the front axle out of Mark Kinder's car. Brad, there's a lot of tension and excitement and adrenaline when you get the first start of the race. After a red flag like this, has that gone away now? Are you just down to business, or does it all come back again because you have a second shot at it? Well, that depends on where you are. And, and you know, for Mark and these guys, I mean, they're pr probably really pumped up. You know Sammy is, and they're going to be charging through the back of the field here. Danny Lasoski sits in third in Chris Black's car. Chris is standing by with Dave Reed. After starting on the front row and dropping back to fifth, this is the lucky break you guys were waiting for. What kind of changes did you make? Well, we're having a little bit of trouble getting our stagger just right. And we made a few changes, tried and tighten the car up, and we're kind of more leaning towards the end of the race. So hopefully if we can get the car a little tighter, we can get back up toward the front. Possible right rear blistering as well on Chris Black's car. Bobby Gerald? Well, Carl Kinzer, you've been able to assess the damage now to Mark's car and your car. How bad is it, and uh, are you guys 100% now to resume? Well, no, we, it's knocked out of line a little bit, but uh, maybe we can come up and get in the top 10. So if I get in the top 10 now, you don't have to go into the rear. I'll be happy. All right, good luck to you. Steve Evans? Yeah, Kenny Woodruff, Dave Blaney's crew chief, has been wanting to win the Knoxville Nationals as long as there has been in Knoxville Nationals, and you got a shot right now. We got a good chance, but it's not over with. We still got 20 laps to go. Your tire wear looked uh, exceptionally good. Yeah, we, we went with, chose a pair of hard tires. So Dave, how hard do you think he's gonna pace the tires a little bit here? Uh, no, he don't have to. He can run as hard as he can right now. Ooh, that's bad news for the competition. Dave Blaney has finished second here twice, including last year, and once again in 1989. 
Still looking for that first Knoxville crown. I'd say listen to Kenny Woodruff there. They must have the 62s on, because even a four, with the 40, yeah, with 20 laps, I mean, you could possibly grind them out if you were too hard. Grind them off if you were too hard on the 62, you can abuse pretty hard. So I'm just guessing, but I would say that's what he has. And Chris Black talking about the stagger on Masoski's car. Well, you can't change tires on the red without going to the tail. So they could, they wanted to stagger it different. They couldn't change them. They could adjust the chassis somewhat to make up for it. But uh, there's only so much you can do. So we'll have to wait and see what they can do here. And we're hearing from the pits that Dave Blaney has a 40 on. Well, then, then the, the track must, you heard him say earlier that it'll get real abrasive and then it goes back to where it's not so hard on tires. Well, maybe it's gotten to that point and what their tire wear looks like now, even with the 40, that they're more than comfortable that he can do whatever he wants with it and still make the race. Guy Forbrook has seven track championships here at Knoxville as a car owner. And he is looking for his first ever Knoxville Nationals win. That is the car that Jack Hotshield drives for him. Jack Yeldon owns this car. Guy turns the wrenches on it. Jack handles the controls. Today, Bree. I am down with Guy Florbrook. Car's not moving up, it's not moving back. What kind of changes did you make to try to make it up to the front? Well, we're all right. I mean, we, we passed three or four cars from the top right in the start, and actually we were as fast as Sammy and Mark. They just got out there. But it's starting to lay rubber on the bottom, and Hyde didn't quite catch it soon enough. But I don't know, they, they scored us behind a rare for some reason. He's never even passed us, so I don't know what's going on here. But you can see the rubber's gonna come down. And the next 10 laps is ever out in front, it's gonna be hard to pass. Hey, nobody knows this place better than Guy Forbrook, with the exception of maybe Carl Kinzer. Well, I was thinking a little bit about that. In this top group here, Blaney and Hodnett haven't done a whole lot of racing here as far as on a weekly basis, but Daniel Lasoski, who sits in third, has won seven track championships. He's the winningest driver here ever. Johnny Herrera, who they're scoring right now inside, uh, just behind Skip Jackson's car. Which is he, a, lap, a lap car, right? Right, Jackson's a lap car, and Herrera actually sits fourth. He's got a track championship here. And uh, of course, we've got the 22 car that Han Shield is driving, which is tuned by Guy Forbrick, who has seven track championships. So a lot of knowledge inside the top five here. To Bobby Gerald. And we've talked a lot about Lasoski and Hoddenschild and Blaney, but very quietly, Greg Hodnett in the 11H now finds himself in second. But remember, guys, he got upside down here in, in the A-Main uh, last year. His best finish in the Knoxville Nationals was a fifth in 1994, when everyone remembers he made the big alphabet soup charge from the, what was it, the D to the C, through the B and all the way up into the A to, to grab that fifth place finish. So this is a, a big moment right now in the lives of Greg Hodnett and his crew chief, Sonny Kratzer. Kratzer's been here three more times than has Hodnett, so he's got a little bit more experience. Doug Clark, watchful over them. Steve Kenji, you saw him go by. He's still mired middle of the pack. He'll get one more lap around as they go by the cone. Now, the rule with the cone is you got to go past the cone in single file. That's where you actually start the race again, and you cannot pass anybody until you yourself have physically passed the cone. Right, so the, when the leader takes off, if he stumbles or, or, or jumps the cushion going into turn three, you can drive under him, that's a pass. Once you go by the cone, you can pass anytime, anywhere. So, uh, you know, the, used to be guys used to, uh, an excuse that they uh, jumped on the green or anything like that. They can't do that now with the cone. Steve Kinzer, by the way, is sitting in 13th position right now. Well, here we go. 20 laps to a $100,000 payday at Knoxville. He was saucy going around the outside, trying to get around Greg Hodnett. Come out of turn four, he's got a run on him, and he did not quite get by him there. Hodnett in the red and yellow number 11, and we got one up along the wall. Is that Jeff Swindell? See the Ford sticker on the front? No, no it's Pinnaker, the other Ford car. There it is, Pinnegar, the other car. They, they're both Fords, and they both got a seven, and they're both black. <laughs> and, and we couldn't see the, the non-flame job from that That's angle. That's right. There's Steve Kinzer, who sits in 13th right now. Bobby Gerald is caught up with his crew chief, Scott Gherkin. That's right, and it wasn't the start that uh, the King and Scott Gherkin hoped for. What were you guys able to do on the red flag, Scott? Uh, we never changed a whole lot. Just. Some minor changes. I mean, we wasn't going that all that bad to begin with. We just got bottled up down there and about got into the wall. And, and then we got tangled up with another car and lost a couple of spots. It's 
it's one of the things, like I said earlier, that if you're not, if things are not going your way, it's probably not going to make a whole lot of difference anyway. It's going to be, it'd be hard to get to the front from where we're at. All right, Steve Kinzer has done it before from further back, though, Rob. Pace seems to pick up a little bit this time as they come to the cone. A little bit quicker. Yeah, Blaney had them rolling through one and two a lot faster that time as they came to the cone. Soski goes upstairs to try to get around. Find it again, and it doesn't work again. Herrera onto the bottom of him. Hot shield in the Pennzoil car got, got pinched behind Skip Jackson, the lap car, and lost quite a bit of ground. Good battle between Herrera and Lasoski in the fight for third. Herrera on the bottom, he'll take the spot. We heard Chris Black say they're hoping Danny's car comes back around at the back end of the race, but they better hope that comes in a hurry because Blaney's checking out. Well, Herrera's got a good run. I did notice a little tire smoke off of his right rear. Dude, it is, here goes Danny back by him. Danny's car right there, Danny was loose. He got underneath of him and you saw the back of the car come around. So I'd say they have too much stagger, too small left to retire. And, and what Chris may be hoping for is it got rubber down to where the car, this track got tighter and stickier. Uh, then you need to stagger, but right now he's just too loose. Working our way back through, there's Gertie and Jackson. You can see the smoke coming off those right rear tires. And Craig Delansky behind them in the red 1W. Here's Sammy Swindell trying to make his way through the pack, and you can see Mark Kinzer just in front of him. You can see how much Sammy's sliding around out there, how that track is changing. Yeah, what a shame for both of them. They were in that same position battling for the lead. Now here they are clearing the back of the pack. Halfway home to the $100,000 payday. Boy, and the yellow car couldn't see the number. Jumped over the cushion and just about got the ball. There's our leader, Dave Blaney. That's coming out of turn two. Looking for his first Knoxville Nationals crown, as is his tuner, Kenny Woodruff. They're halfway home to it. Blaney moved down. He's actually running the, you know, down into the rubber. Mark Kinzer and Sammy Swindell still back in the pack after what looked like one of these two would be the winner of this year's event. Now they're struggling just to try to see if they can get into the top 10. Yeah, Sammy Swindell leading the Nationals, like I said, 23 times and only won once. That was his best shot. He's got a nice run coming out of turn two. Still can't make the pass on Mark if they go into turn three. So the tires, there's tire smoke. Off the two lap cars they went around. Sammy got up over the cushion, but got, got sideways, broke the tires, loose it. Dave Blaney now working traffic in the vibrant number 10. Boy, boy, way, way, way sideways there. Look at that. Look at Honda Hon now closes what, right in. What he did, he, had, he went in on that lap car, Ralph, and missed the rubber, what we call missed. The, there's the sticky spots on the racetrack where the groove is. He went a little bit too hard around, tried to go around the lap car, slid out the rubber, got up into the slick, and you saw how how much Honda gained on him right there. Honda is in the red car, and Herrera is right behind him. They're second and third. Blaney knows he has to get around this seven car. Lasoski still sits in fourth, and Hodenshield is in fifth. Gertie behind them, and then Delansky. Boy, Dave running pretty sideways there in three and four. Getting tied up behind the uh, Henniger. The seven car in front of it. Getting restarted. Way down on the bottom trying to get around Pinnaker. Got a nice run on him coming out of turn four. He's going to maybe get by. On board with Gertie. In front of him, Lasoski. Looks like hot, hot, hot shield. shield. In front of him. That would be the fight up there for fourth position. Joe running the bottom down there where the rubber. Most of the. Most of the cars have moved down to the bottom. Most of the lead cars have moved down to the bottom of the racetrack where that rubber is. It's just it's sticky down there. You can see they're starting to catch up to Herrera for third. So maybe that car coming around for Danny Lasoski as he starts to track down 
Pereira, I can tell you Hot Shields is getting quicker because he is all over the back of Lasoski. Chris Black has said he's going to have to park this car that Danny Lasoski is driving after tonight. They're out of money. So Danny Lasoski is going to have to go find a new ride, but he has done so well here this week that uh, a lot of people have been calling him and talking about where is he going to go drive. He's got a lot of offers on the table. So you can expect to see Danny Lasoski in a new car any day now. Blaney up front, still leading in the fight for second. Heats up. Honda, the red number 11, and Herrera slides wide. And, yep, and Hot Shield goes by. And Hot Shield go by. Well, like we saw about uh, Dave there while he slipped up off the rubber and got the uh, Hot and Shield and Lasoski drove by. So that moves Lasoski up to third and Hot Shield up to fourth. Herrera gets kicked back to fifth. That's Tyler Walker they're going by in the black 35. There's a groove about it eight to ten feet wide around turn three and four on the bottom. If you slide off of that, look at that. Pacho picking the right front tire up. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Dave Blaney still hasn't gotten by the seven car up front, but uh, that just shows how the track now. Dave's trying everything. And he's going to have Jeff Swindell in front of him on the cushion and Pinnaker in front of him on the bottom. So which way do you go? Well, just as he moved to the bottom, Jeff Swindell moved down to try to get around Pinnier. And look at Hodnett closing right up behind him out of turn four. Two laps to go. White flag this time by. They were working the next to last lap. Dave Blaney and Kenny Woodruff have never won the Amico Knoxville Nationals. In two more turns, Dave Blaney's going to win $200,000 within seven days as he picks up another $100,000 check and his first Amico Knoxville Nationals crown. Congratulations, Kenny Woodruff, first Nationals. Greg Hondit will come home second. What a fine run for him. Danny Lasoski gets credited with third. Herrera was fourth, I believe, and Hodden Shield. Now they're showing uh, Hodden Shield on the scoreboard and then Herrera. But we'll get well, the official for you, the official rundown for you when we come back. But we do know one thing. Dave Blaney is the 37th annual Amico Knoxville Nationals champion. We'll meet him when we come back. Welcome back to Knoxville, Iowa. As you look at the top five, especially look at the number one spot worth $100,000, may I introduce to you the 1997 Knoxville Nationals champion, Dave Blaney. Wow. Well, listen to the crowd. Well, it was, it was a different kind of race than I expected. Uh, you don't you only usually see this racetrack go one lane like that. And, uh, you know, I got a huge break with those the two front guys wrecking. And unbelievable week. Things have been going our way for the last 10 days or so. Uh, you just can't ask for much more. I got a, you know, a great crew. And uh, uh, my partner, Keith Hilton, has been terrific for a first-year owner. And uh, Kenny Woodruff, he's just jumping out of that plaid shirt. Well, that's the first one he's got here, too, and the first one for me. And uh, yeah, I can't be happier. Vibrant's been been great to me for a long time and happy to get one for him. And here's some more good news. You are the Mopar high performer of the race, and that carries a little bit of cash and a lot of prestige. Congratulations again. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming out and staying an extra day. Okay, hey, Bobby Gerald. Well, I'm alongside Kenny Woodruff right now, and uh, Kenny, congratulations, man. How does it feel to win your first Knoxville Nationals? Oh, it feels great. Did you know that Dave could do it, and, uh, and, and how excited were you, or what were your feelings when you saw the incident early in the race with Mark and Sammy? Well, it was an unfortunate deal for them. Uh, we started seventh, and we had already got into uh, third, so we were coming good. He picked the right tire, and he led Dave Blaney to his first Knoxville Nationals victory. Well, that will wrap up the 37th annual Pennzoil World of Outlaws Amico Knoxville Nationals, and Dave Blaney is the winner. Quickly, Brad, what a race. Three years in a row that the historical big one win winner has come back and won the Nationals. I'd, I'd work on that race first next year. For all the crew here in Knoxville, great job, everybody. We sure hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the Amico Knoxville Nationals. So long.